Quantum technology is a really exciting field to be in right now. We can make use of uh, entanglement to develop uh, exciting new applications in sensing, communications and computing. In my lab, we're interested in tackling the kinds of problems that currently take up a lot of supercomputing resources with the classical supercomputers. And these problems can be materials problems or chemistry problems. Dr. Lowe, you can actually control individual atoms and put them together in large numbers. Together, they can actually act as uh, the basic processor for quantum computers. Singapore is a good place to be working in quantum technologies. My research has so far been supported by the National Research Foundation of Singapore and also more recently by the Singapore Quantum Engineering Programme. So Singapore has been supporting basic science in quantum technology for a very long time in a major way since 2007 with the founding of the Centre for Quantum Technologies. And then around 2018, Singapore decided to support more application-driven research and that's how the Quantum Engineering Programme uh, got started. The quantum engineering program looks for projects that have a very clear application use case and give them funding so that the technology readiness level can be increased. We have actually formed a national quantum office to help to coordinate all these uh, research investments. At the same time, plan and uh, drive a development of a national quantum strategy. We need an ecosystem community of both the researchers as well as the uh, suppliers of solutions to come together to co-create solutions uh, for quantum. The quantum engineering program supports three national platforms that encourage collaboration between researchers and end users. The National Quantum Computing Hub, the National Quantum Safe Network and the National Quantum Fabulous Foundry. In the National Quantum Computing Hub, we have experts in algorithms and software we also have people who are working on building a small-scale quantum computer to put it on the cloud and make it accessible for the end users in Singapore. Everyone has heard about quantum computing. Quantum technology is also useful for communications. We have this platform called the National Quantum Safe Network to showcase how stable the technology is, uh, what's the performance like, and we can also test it over Singapore's optical fiber network. If a quantum com computer comes along the way, it's powerful enough to break all your current day um, encryption technologies. Uh, we need to start to think about how we can migrate from our classical cybersecurity solutions to one that's quantum safe. We will identify uh, partners who want to try these technologies that are typically in industry. Uh, and then we will also you know, work with vendors who have very mature uh, appliances that we can use. Spectral is a startup based in Singapore. Uh, we spun out from the Centre for Quantum Technologies, or CQT, and our vision is to build and deploy global quantum networks. Spectral is very fortunate to be in Singapore where we have a very vibrant uh, quantum ecosystem. We have talent, we have government support and funding, and also heightened awareness and interest in quantum technologies. When we talk about quantum devices in general, sometimes there's a need to actually you know, fabricate these devices. And so this is where we have a platform called the Quantum Fabulous Foundry. This network of clean rooms, each of them with specific machines that can be used for particular types of fabrication. A useful quantum computer is many years away. But right now, quantum sensors are available as a technology and we can actually push the the readiness level of this technology for deployment. I use uh, quantum light correlated photons. When something happens with one photon, uh, another photon uh, can sense it. So we can transfer information from infrared to the visible range. This helps us to perform bioimaging uh, to detect biomarkers for cancer, for pathology and so on. And recently, QEP uh, funded my research to bring the technology into the real-world application. We are already beginning to see a handful of startups emerging in Singapore. For example, one of the companies that we have is Atom Ionics. At Atom Ionics, we are building quantum sensors for the real-world applications. Right now, at Atom Ionics, we are building quantum gravimeters. Gravity is different at different places. For example, earthquake monitorings, volcanic eruption monitoring, sea level changes, all of those things can be actually seen through gravity signatures. Singapore has the kind of ecosystem that you need for building such kind of startups. It really felt like 
they were already waiting for quantum technologies companies to come up. Quantum technology as a whole is very exciting. And I think Singapore is a good place to do this. There's really a rich network of quantum researchers tackling all aspects of quantum technologies. Quantum ecosystem is very friendly and very supportive and uh, very open. And Singapore is a very attractive city. What I hope to see is a lot more enterprises and startups who is able to use what we have invested in quantum tech to benefit mankind. I think that's what really excites me, um, to think about Singapore really driving that quantum revolution, which I believe would really fundamentally change the way we do things today.